think if you hear a, a finely tuned set of pipes being played and played well, there's no other sound like it. There's no other instrument like it. It's a sound that is so different from anything else. I can't imagine life without that sound. You see the, how far reaching piping is going throughout the world and the amount of people playing bagpipes now is really enormous. This film is about a celebration held during the millennium in aid of cancer care, when thousands of pipers from all over the world gathered for the biggest piping festival ever staged. Edinburgh, Scotland's ancient capital, is a city of contrasts where the traditions of the past share space with the present. On this sunny August day, there's a sense of history in the making. The city is preparing for the huge crowds expected to arrive and support the bid to raise half a million pounds in one day for cancer care. Here at the beginning of the Millennium Parade of 10,000 pipers. As you can see, they're all around. They've come from all over the world to be here today. And this in aid of Marie Curie Cancer Care. It's a fantastic event. The backdrop of Edinburgh Castle there will all be marching around. They're tuning up now. You can hear all the different sounds. Let's go down and meet some of them. I've been playing a long time. I've never been uh, part of anything as big as this. It's fantastic. You know. And how do you feel about it being an aid of Marie Curie? It's excellent. It's always it's good to be doing it for something special like that. It is very exciting for you to be part of such a big parade. Oh, oh hell yeah! You know, I've been in, in mass bands, but nothing is nothing this size. When we heard about the Millennium March. We decided yeah. we needed to come and do this, and we've been practicing, and uh, we are so excited about being yeah, here. But it it's is for cancer. Great. So. We've uh, been planning this for about five years, so it's uh, it's really a, a dream come true. This is a magnificent event. Absolutely fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. One in a million. That's yeah, okay. it's a day for our lives. We'll never going to see anything like it again. Leading the parade are the military with units from all over the world. Hey, I'm Drum Major Brian Alexander, first town of Black Watch, and I'm the senior drum major from parade and taking the tattoo contingent down to the Princess Street. So, how does it feel leading 10,000 pipes? Proud and, and privileged. We've got the Canadians here, New Zealanders, Australians, South Africans as well, and they're all affiliated to the Scottish regiments. So, I mean, that's a unique occasion as well. Wonderful to get so many bandsmen together. It's the only common language in the world is music. You can all talk with one another, all playing together. Edinburgh is no stranger to grand occasions, and every year it hosts its internationally famous arts festival. Whether it's on the streets or on the stage, the atmosphere is vibrant. There can be no more appropriate setting for the world's largest gathering of pipers than the city of Edinburgh. Oh Edinburgh, oh Edinburgh, you're a queen we are proud to show. I claimed each festive autumn fall, you proudly take your curtain call, the past and present linked in faith.
Marie Curie is Britain's comprehensive cancer charity, bringing care and support to thousands of people, and they do this free of charge. So today, hundreds of volunteers are busy selling goods and collecting donations for the charity, which is dependent on fundraising for 44% of its annual budget of £68 million. I asked Sarah Grotrian, Marie Curie's secretary for Scotland, how difficult was it to raise money? One in three people get cancer. Every single person knows somebody well, loves somebody well, who's had cancer, or who has got cancer now. I mean, you can live for years with it. So when you go out with a box, it's actually quite easy. And people, it's all about making friends. If you can make friends with people and make things fun, they want to come along and do things, and they're raising money for such a fantastic cause. There are 10 Marie Curie centres throughout Britain, two of them in Scotland. When Marie Curie first started, the Marie Curie centres, as they're known now, were called nursing homes. And because of the type of work we did, we felt that nursing home wasn't explaining to people exactly what, what happened here. The word hospice does intend to frighten people. But there's nothing to frighten anyone in these centres. The atmosphere is much more relaxed than in hospital, it's less formal. We try and accommodate whatever the patient's needs are, you know, sort of to make it very individual for them. And if they want to have a long lie or they don't want to, to do something at that, that specific time, um, then we can always accommodate them and try and, and sort out whatever they want to do. A lot of our patients might just be in for a brief period for a week or two weeks um, and some patients obviously remain with us um, until they die. We deal with people at all stages of their illness who need management of symptoms like pain or nausea and vomiting, people who have emotional difficulties come here, people whose families need help. We provide a range of services and of types of care and people's needs are always very individual and every family is individual. To maintain this level of care, Marie Curie must find new and innovative ways of fundraising. It's the biggest event that Marie Curie nationwide has ever done. I mean, to have 10,000 people coming from all over the world at their own expense. And if you think about it, a band coming from Australia, I don't know how much that costs, airfares, hotels, for 25 people, that's a heck of a lot of money bringing money for Marie Curie. And the crowds, it, it will be a marvellous mix of everybody getting excited about the pipes and everybody also thinking about someone they know and love well who either has died or has got cancer. So it's, it's, a, it's a magic mix. This is an extraordinary feeling to be the head of this, to know that behind me there are 10,000 pipes and drums from all over the world who are about to go marching down Princess Street, and this in aid of Marie Curie Cancer Care. It's a wonderful event to be part of. I'm very, very proud, very proud to be Scottish, I have to tell you, very proud to be here. OK, here they are, the Millennium Parade of 10,000 pipers! Although the military contingent has set off at a lightning 120 paces a minute, the civilians follow at a more leisurely pace. Amongst the leading pipers is Gordon Walker, the parade's honorary pipe president. He and the other thousands of players have been organised into 52 separate contingents. It'll take the contingents nearly an hour to complete the route through some of Edinburgh's most ancient and elegant streets. Starting at the Royal Mile, 
the parade will wind its way down the mound and across Waverley Bridge and into Princess Street, the city's famous thoroughfare, and finally to the dispersal point off Lothian Road. The inspiration for this extraordinary event came from Tom Brotrian when he was a young piper. I was doing an art project at school and looking at old photographs of Edinburgh and there was a photograph of a parade in 1951 of a thousand pipers along Princess Street. And as a piper it just sort of caught my imagination. I thought, why doesn't anyone do anything like that? And it turned out the only way I could ever get to play in a parade like that was to go and organise it myself. When he thought this idea, I said, that's brilliant, now, but we ought to do something with it. This is a trouble. Your whole family gets sucked into fundraising. So. And I said, that's a brilliant idea, but what about if we did it for Marie Curie, you see, and then we can... And that's, how it, that's how it went. Oh, I see. So we're well in harness together. Marie Curie was born in Poland and won the Nobel Prize for her scientific work in the field of radioactivity during the early 1900s. She's a fantastic woman, and in terms of fundraising, the fact that we're called after her is one of the best things that ever happened. When people know about Marie Curie, they just call it Marie Curie, or the Madame Curie, which is what they call it up here. And it becomes a personal thing, and you bring in Marie Curie, the person, for fundraising, and it's, it's, it all, it's much more exciting and much more... Um, it grasps the imagination. Without the support of corporate sponsors, Millennium Pipes could never happen. The generosity has been staggering and so has the ingenuity. With so much tartan around, it was inevitable a special one should appear. Kilt makers Loch Caron designed the Millennium tartan specially to commemorate the new millennium. And we brought in the blue and white of the Scottish flag, the national flag, the red and gold of the lion rampant and a traditional tartan green. So it's a tartan for everybody. This tartan was worn by Scotland's rugby captain, Gavin Hastings, who was one of the many celebrities supporting the day, as was Ronnie Brown of top folk group, The Corries, who wrote the anthem, The Flower of Scotland. Aye, and it's great to see the crowds for the, for the cause, for this Larry Curie group. It's fantastic. Yes. Canada. 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 Yep. Cornwall. Nice to find a lot of Canadians here. I saw your mother back and in And a familiar face here. <laughs> China. Yeah. How are you? Have you finished that? Our president is the Prince of Wales, and he is very interested and has taken a keen interest in what we're doing. And of course, he said himself, many of his relations and friends have died of cancer. I mean, it doesn't matter who you are. You're done very well. I think it will have seen many, many things. Sure. Yeah. Are, are you selling a few of these today? Is this this is I was in Claire filming for Marie Curie. I wonder if I might ask you what you think of today's fundraising it's event. Very enjoyable, the whole thing. And a marvellous way of raising money, I think. It's all fun for everybody, hopefully. I think a lot of people turn up very early in, the, early in the morning. Recognition is important. The charity knows it must keep a high public profile if it is to maintain its many valuable services. For instance, last year 5,000 Marie Curie nurses cared for over 21,000 cancer patients in their own homes. Jackie Nicholl is one of those specialists. For me, to be able to keep somebody at home and to give people support at home is my prime objective. I feel very fortunate that I have access to the centre here if patients need symptom control that is very difficult to deal with at home then it's a real luxury to be able to think you have somewhere else with the expertise and working as a team but for a lot of people to be able to stay at home is such a precious thing when their lifespan might not be very long. Marie Curie is offering so many different services to patients with cancer, whether it be inpatient care, social worker, occupational therapist, physiotherapist. There are lots of different professionals who are offering lots of different things. How do you cope with the emotional stresses yourself when you're dealing with situations which you inevitably must, in some measure, get involved with? How do you I feel it's a very privileged position to be in. It can be a very humbling job. And for me, if by helping somebody's journey be more comfortable, then that helps me through. Having achieved a new record for the largest ever pipe band, there's an air of anticipation that today's target for Marie Curie is within grasp.
The team who have been organising it, Magnus and Thomas, Sarah Grochen, all the Marie Curie volunteers, um, they've done so well. And we'll have raised a good amount you know, I hope we'll have raised half a million. I don't know where we're going to be. You can't tell till after these events. But everybody's been very generous and we couldn't have been happier about that. Is it, is it come up to all your expectations? Oh, beyond it, beyond it. I mean, how often do you see many, this many people watching a bagpipe competition? You know, I and mean, that's, that's great. The principal organisation behind Millennium Pipes came from Magnus Orr and Tom Grotrian. Their first task was to gather thousands of players and like two recruiting sergeants they scoured the world for recruits. The Millennium Pipes has completely taken over our lives for the last three or four years. We've got a vast number of players coming from overseas. Um, our principal countries I suppose are Canada and the States, but a lot coming from Australia, New Zealand, South Africa we've got two or three bands, South America. A lot from Europe. I was surprised by the number of European bands. Uh, I didn't realise there were so many. Florida, Ottawa, Canada. I'm from Moscow, Ontario. From the Netherlands. New Zealand. Baltimore, Maryland, in the States. North Vancouver, British Columbia. Ireland in Holland. Northern Ireland. Indianapolis, Indiana. Seaport Highlands, Holland. Perth, Western Australia. New Jersey, speaking South Africa. Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, United States. Shirley near Birmingham. We've come all the way from Anchorage, Alaska, halfway around the world to be here today to pipe with you and share our music and be part of this experience. I like to play the pipes and I informed my employer two years ago that I wanted to have a day off and I repeated the question last January and he jokingly said, well, you'll resign if I don't give you leave. I said, I most certainly will. Spain, Spain. Can you speak English? Oh, no, no. no. Speak English? No. no. How do you feel about being here today? Ah, it's wonderful. Everywhere you look, uh, there are pipes. Uh, are you excited? <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Pardon? From Germany. Oh, which part of Germany? Uh, do you know Bielefeld? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Elephant and Castle. I beg your pardon? Elephant and Castle. Oh, the Elephant and Castle? Yes. Oh, that's great. How do you feel about being part of the gathering today? Love every minute of it. It's brilliant. <laughs> great to be him. <laughs> Lovely. I bet you I'm the oldest paper here. I'm 77. Pardon? And I bet you I'm the oldest paper okay, here. Okay, sum up for me in a sort of set. How, how, just sum up in a sentence how it is being here. Oh, what? Oh, I wait. I, I, I got these either. These are earplugs for prank pipes. Even as the leading bands reach the halfway point, others still move to the starting line. Marshalling the thousands of players into their correct position requires an abundance of patience. Miles behind. Catch up with them. Go right around. All up front! Quick march! In 1547, a French officer visiting Edinburgh made the following observation. The wild, savage Scots encouraged themselves to arms by the sound of their bagpipes. Well, that might not be the case today, but the tradition of the instrument is martial. It was the Scottish regiments who first introduced the great Highland bagpipe to the world. Wherever Scots migrants settled, they also took their instruments and music with them, and soon the Highland bagpipe was adopted by other nations and cultures. Piping is now spread everywhere. It's not known how many pipers there are in the world today. It's estimated at well over 250,000. A common bond exists between pipers regardless of nationality. Pipers are completely obsessed. Um, we are a single issue group, essentially. Uh, we think about piping all the time. If you get four or five pipers together in a pub, it is extremely tedious for anyone else because the conversation within minutes will get round to it and won't stop for hours. 
and it's the sort of thing that makes you travel around the world from the one corner of the earth to the other simply to take part in a street parade and yet people are spending tens of thousands of pounds to get here because they are, well we all are, completely obsessed. and the whole parade. What does it feel like being the like, last? I think he's last. What do you feel like being the last in the parade? Uh, I'm not last, he's last. <laughs> I'm always last. <laughs> Just before him, though. You get used to it after yeah. a while, right? <laughs> <laughs> Millennium Pipes has enabled players from different parts of the world to share their style of music, like this band from Spain. In fact, during the Middle Ages, every country in Europe had its own version of the bagpipe. Edinburgh's association with the bagpipe also goes back many centuries. Scottish kings enjoyed listening to the instrument, although in the 15th century, James III of Scotland paid English pipers to entertain his court. A tradition borrowed from the military is the role of drum major. In modern pipe bands, drum majors who come in many guises lead the parade with a touch of flamboyancy. knows when drums were added to pipes, but certainly by the 1860s it was common. Pipe band drumming has a style of its own and requires considerable skill, although some make it look easy, even finding time to have a chat. The bagpipe is indeed a unique instrument. Its sound can evoke many emotions. It can be played on its own or en masse. Most pipers and drummers are amateur. There are no huge financial rewards. They do it for the love of the music. For them, being part of Millennium Pipes is reward enough. And for the half million spectators, the experience has been inspiring as well as fascinating. When you see them at the bottom, you think, how are they ever going to do this? And then it all just falls into place, and it's been great. Absolutely spectacular. Made everywhere here for three and a half months. This is the highlight. Spectacular. On a passage chez nous en France. Okay. There's nothing like that in French. Nothing like that in no, French. No. Oh, I thought it was the most beautiful display of pageantry I've seen since I've been here. I loved it. <laughs>
Can you ask for anything better? No. We've, we haven't even got anything as good as this in Yorkshire. the scientific research component of Marie Curie, but it's also very important that we do clinical research to better improve our understanding of what happens to people with advanced illness, to better our understanding of the way we manage symptoms and the other problems that come, you know, come our way. And we have, because we're a large charity, there is a tremendous opportunity to do good research. Cancer kills an average of 150,000 people every year in Britain. The tireless work of the Marie Curie nurses and centres provides care for today and hope for tomorrow. People are here to live and I prefer them to say they're here to live, not to die. You know, sort of they're living for, um, to the best of their ability and if we can improve their standard of living and their comfort then that's to the better. Suffering is not always negative. Sometimes it is, some people struggle greatly. Others find a curious hope. They find that in spite of what's happening, in spite of their prognosis, they can find moments that are special. And often people focus less on physical things and more on relationships and family things. And that's one of the things we try and do is allow people to find their own meaning. Because in a sense, you can face your death better if you found some meaning in your life. There's no doubt Millennium Pipes has been a great success. It's been fun for everybody. Spirits couldn't be higher. We can reflect on the energy and dedication of the people who made it happen, on the record-breaking collection for Marie Curie, and on witnessing the biggest bagpipe gathering ever, the record-breaking march of 10,000 pipers. Piping strikes a chord with everybody. I think when you hear the pipes, you know, something goes down the back of your spine. All these pipers and drummers have come from across the world. The heritage of Scotland has come back home, and it's, it's been unique, quite utterly unique. Oh.